In Genesis chapter 4, verse 9, it states, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? That's a good question to ask. Are you your brother's keeper? And yes, you are. You are responsible in many ways in how you influence or cause to sin another individual brother or sister in Christ. Read in Matthew 18, verse 6 through 9, it says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the death of the sea. Woe to the world because of all offenses, for all offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses comes. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. The Greek word is Gehenna. Now, I want you to understand something. Here we're told, be careful not to cause someone else to stumble. And we're also told to cast away whatever things cause us to stumble. Whatever person it may be that causes you to sin, stay away from that person. They're a bad influence. No matter how of a brother or sister they may act, they are. But be careful of such people. We go to Romans 14, verse 12 to 13. It says, So then each of us shall give account to himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to play stumbling block or cause to fall in our brother's way. 1 Corinthians 10, 32-33 says, Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. You know, brothers and sisters, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And you are a living epistle in front of many people's lives. When people see you, they see Christ. <clears throat> so before you go and indulge in sin, make sure, make sure, and I mean it with all my heart, make sure you'd rather not do it. Make sure that you count the consequences if you get caught, if a brother or sister sees you. Before you say a curse word, think about it twice. Are you saving, uh, leaving a message to a other brother or sister? It's okay to curse. Or if you dr dress provocative, showing certain parts of your body that you shouldn't. Are you giving... A message to your other sisters or even brothers to dress the same way? And are you causing your fellow brother to lust after you or your fellow sister? Oh, we better be careful how we talk, how we, sh how we dress, the things we do. 
and where we go. All these things we need to keep in mind our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's play at him. Let's play the following him. Hold on one second. All glory, laud, and honor. Continue um, with this podcast. I want us to go First Corinthians ten, and we're going to verses twenty three to thirty three. Want to read this in in paragraph order in context? Paul says, "All things are lawful for me." But not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other well-being. You know what he's saying. I may be able to do certain things that my brother may not be able to do. Um, Here he's in reference to um, food that is sacrificed to idols um, <clears throat> that he's going to continue speaking about. Uh, I had that occasion where I went to the supermarket and <clears throat> there's um, there's meats in the supermarkets that um, Arabic supermarkets call cousin. And <clears throat> there are some meats that are dedicated to Allah and those meats are cheaper than the other meats and I had a brother go up to me and say you can't buy that meat that meat is is offered to Allah and and we're not to have fellowship with idols brother and I was like yes you're right you're right you're right about that. I don't have fellowship with idols, and so um, I know that what the scripture says. Um, it says you could buy it, but don't buy in front of this brother because it, it will affect his conscience if I buy in front of him. <clears throat> so I, I left, and I, I thanked him as I was leaving, and when he turned his head. I made sure he was really walking. I walked too. And we walked separate ways. When I saw the clothes was clear, I bought that meat because it was much cheaper. But the point of the story is I will not buy that meat in front of him because it will cause him to sin. Now, let's continue reading this. Um, It says... In verse 25, eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. If any of those who do not believe invites you to dinner, you desire 
to go. Eat whatever is set before you, asking no questions for conscience sake. But if some anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat. It for the sake of the one who told you, for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and all his fullness. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, why am I evil spoken of for the food over which I gave thanks? Therefore, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. So you see what this is telling me. This is telling me. <clears throat> I can eat anything. Even food that has been sacrificed to idols, as long as I give thanks to God. But. If someone tells me this food is offered to an idol, I should not eat it in front of them because of their conscience sake, because they don't know the way of God clearly. Yes, I could show them a Bible verse, but many times a Bible verse won't help them. Many times they will still ignore the word. Now, I want us to go to Bible reading time. We're in Genesis chapter 5, and we're about to go th through the genealogy, the genealogy of Adam. Let's hear it. 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. And Seth lived an hundred and five years, and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enos lived ninety years, and begat Cainan. And Enos lived after he begat Cainan eight hundred and fifteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years. And he died. And Cainan lived seventy years, and begat Mahalalel. And Cainan lived after he begat Mahalalel eight hundred and forty years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Cainan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Mahalalel lived sixty and five years, and begat Jared. And Mahalalel lived after he begat Jared eight hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were eight hundred ninety and five years, and he died. And Jared lived an hundred sixty and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch eight hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years, and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years, and begat a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, 
This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years and he died. And Noah was five hundred years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's listen to another hymn. And after this hymn, we'll continue with our conversation on... on being our brother's keeper. Let's play the hymn, All People That Are On Earth Do Well, Do Dwell. him was that now let's continue this Paul said it very clearly he lives this life not to please himself or not to live for ourselves we are to think of others we are to esteem other people higher than ourselves <clears throat> now uh, one thing that bothers me is when when you go to a church and you see women dressed almost naked, wearing something really short, or showing cleavage. <clears throat> and you might say, well, who are you to judge them? Well, the Bible tells a woman to dress modesty in modesty. Modesty is not showing your skin. It's nothing... Modesty, the definition of modesty is not is dressing in a form not to not to call attention upon yourself. <clears throat> modesty is not in a provocative way, is not to be dressed in a provocative way. When a man is in a pulpit <clears throat> or an altar, whatever you want to call it, and he's preaching or he's teaching the word of God. You know, over there, you can see things that that are beyond no unnoticeable. And for a woman to show her cleavage is for her to show irreverence to the house of God and putting stumbling block on men and even women. Why? <clears throat> Why other women? <clears throat> because these other women will want to dress like you're dressing. You'll be tempting them to dress that way. Oh, it's okay if I dress like that. I saw a sister dress like that. And the pastor didn't say anything or any brother said anything. So maybe I should dress like that. We have to be careful in, in, in what we do. Are you putting others before you? In that sense, you are too. <clears throat> You should think first before you cause your brother or sister to sin. Well, if you want to dress like that outside of the church, that's up to you. You know, you shouldn't dress like that. But if you want to dress that way outside of the churches, it's up to you. Who am I to tell you anything? But understand, 
You're causing some stomach blocks. You're causing men to lust. And if that man is married, you're causing him to have an adulterous heart. Well, you may say, well, it's not my fault the man is lost. Then he could close his eyes. He could, he could <clears throat> look the other way. Yes, that's true. He can. But you're putting a, a temptation there. And man has a fallen nature. Or even women as well. There are women that are struggling with lesbianism. And you might be putting a temptation on them. <clears throat> you're, you're causing someone that should not be lusting to lust. And, you know, we, we always accuse the person that falls into sin, but we never accuse the person who caused them to sin. And it's both of their faults. Because you're acting as a seducer. It's both of your fault. I'm not going to say it's not his fault or her fault that fell, but I'm not going to say it's not your fault either. We're called to be our brother's keeper, and I repeat that. You're your brother's keeper, your sister's keeper. I'm my brother's keeper or my sister's keeper. I should not be putting a stumbling block, an occasion for them to fall. <clears throat> and the judgment seat of Christ, I will be accountable to God for that. I don't believe Christians go to the great white throne judgment, those who are truly saved. And that will be another topic which we'll talk about eventually. But I do believe that God will hold you accountable on that day when he sees you. And you might even find out if you don't go to the judgment seat of Christ that you were never was saved. <clears throat> because one of the evidence of your salvation is a love for the brethren. Now, if you're showing your privates, your personals, to a brother and sister in Christ, provoking them, where is the love of the brethren there? I don't see no love of brethren there. The Bible says in 1 John 4, verse 7, Beloved, let us... Love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. <laughs> you know, And then it continues, says, In this is love, not that we love God, but that God, he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God loved us, we ought to love one another. Now, <clears throat> if you're caring more about yourself and not your brother, you don't love God that you could see, that you don't see. You don't love God. You're not showing God's love to them. That's, that's as I could say to you. Let's go to another song. Let's go to this song. It says... Um, let's go to the song. Just as I am without one plea.
Hallelujah. We need to go to Jesus just as we are. But we're not to tend to stay the same way. There needs to be a change. There needs to be a progress of change in our lives. And that progress needs to reflect God. Jesus said to make the cup clean inside and out. First inside, of course, and then the outside. But he didn't say to keep the outside dirty. There has to be a change. <clears throat> there has to be a change in our lives. Huh? I know we're beginning. It's, it's hard to, to, to make a change. And, and you can't do it on your own. It takes time. But we should have unleashed the desire to want to change. And and if you truly love Christ, you stay away from those movies you shouldn't be watching. <clears throat> those godless movies, movies that blaspheme God. <clears throat> you might say, well, it doesn't bother God if I watch this movie. So you're setting an example also to others to watch that movie that blasphemes God. And we will be accountable if we take God's name in vain. And what does Exodus says? The Lord won't hold that person guiltless who takes his name in vain. You're setting an example to others to do the same, and we need to be careful of that. Because it's not just those that do it, but those that teach it also will be punished by God. And if you're one who does it and teach others, woe are you. Let's listen to Matthew chapter 5 today. Chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, 
shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, Yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what great Bible reading today we had. Um, before we go to Mr. Kagalidi's short story time, I would like for us to play one more hymn and let's hear some let's play as the morning breaks
look to God as the morning breaks let's keep our eyes focused on God and God is so good we're in the story of lots of carrots in Mr. Kakalidi's short story time <laughs> let's read it there was one sea rabbit who wanted to be rich and said, If I had so much carrots, I would share them with those in need. I will not be selfish, and I will still make time for God. One day, as she walked to the church, she saw a basket with a letter and a carrot inside that said, Take a carrot, and then take another one. But when you had enough... Throw the basket to the nearest pond. Then you may eat of the carrots, but you may share with others at any time. But remember, make time for God. If you don't throw the basket to the nearest pond, you won't be able to enjoy the carrots. So make sure you do what I said. As she took the carrot, that was in the basket, she saw that a other would appear. So she decided that day to skip church and said, later, after I have enough carrots, I will make time for God. As she was busy at home taking carrots from the basket, a knock of a poor homeless squirrel came at the door. Miss Rabbit, can today you spare me a carrot? I am very hungry, and you always there as a friend to help those who are hungry, even me. Where in response, Miss Rabbit answered, Not today. I haven't gone to the market to buy not even a carrot for me. But maybe the other day you may come. Now leave. As she shut the door and went back to pull more carrots, she was stricken in her conscience that she did nothing she had promised she would do. But the love for more carrots was stronger than the conscience that she had. So that day, pulling carrots from the basket, she herself did not eat, and sleep went away from her eyes. She was selfish and cruel. She had already pulled out more than a million carrots, but yet wanted more. But again, her conscience started to bother her. This time, stronger than before and she said i need to throw the basket in the pond for i have enough and i need to do what i said so go into the pond she threw the basket but part of her not wanting to let go she fell in the pond with the basket and then she was drowning Mr. Squirrel saw her from afar and ran and jumped in the water to save her and told her to let go of the basket. For I can only save you. But she said, I need the basket as well. In response, she said again. Let me speak myself. But she said, I need the basket as well. In response, he said, again, I can only save you. At hearing this, she let go. And as she was on 
land safe and sound, she felt relief that the selfishness and the greed was no more. So she invited Mr. Squirrel and many others to have a feast with all the carrots that she had. Then they all went to church as she promised she would. So the moral of the story is, keep your promises. Remember not to be selfish and make time for God when all your prayers are answered, so it won't be a curse instead of a blessing. What a great story is that. Let's listen to another hymn, and then we will go to Mr. Kakalivi Speaks His Mind. It's another hymn. Let's go to the hymn, Acts and You Will Receive. Ask and you shall receive. Hold on one second. Acts and You Will Receive. segment of the program, Mr. Kakalibi Speaks His Mind. I just want to start with prayer. We need to pray. We need to pray for this nation. Um, it's a big demoral nation. It's a shame that we have no moral president. A president that could set a good example, a good Christian example. To those who see him. Let's pray for this nation. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for this nation that has grown astray. Astray from your word. They don't know your word. They don't love you, Lord. Yes, there are some few that do, 
but more are those that don't. <laughs> Very few love you, Lord God, anymore. Very few are seeking you, are finding you. They want to live according to this world, the lust of the flesh. It's getting as a demoralized world. Everything is permissible, Lord. Only you can change people's hearts. Only you can give them repentance. And we pray, Lord, that you will give them repentance. Have them acknowledge their sin. <laughs> and have them come to you, O oh Lord. Enable them to come to you. Open their eyes so they can see the wonders of your word. It's so sad that many are going astray. Many are following the ways of Baal. And the prices of food is going up and all these situations, Lord. I pray that you will provide for us, Lord God, even in, in this time of inflation and we see <clears throat> certain people, Lord God, grabbing our jobs that are not even Americans, Lord God. <clears throat> because the borders are open so immigrants may come, even though it's a good thing that um, they get a chance, but Lord God, but they're coming in great numbers that we cannot handle. And Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for this nation. Help this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today, and if if you look at the TV, and if you listen to radio, you, you get blindsided, and, and people say, oh, Islam is a religion of peace, and you, you even hear some presidents say, oh, Muslims are peaceful people, but are they peaceful? Maybe certain individual Muslims are peaceful, but what does their scripture says? Their scripture doesn't tell them to be peaceful people. Uh, we read in Surah 1, actually Surah 2, 191, it says this. Surah 2, 191. Let me find it. It tells us this. And kill them wherever you find them. And dry them out from whence they drove you out. And persecution is severer than slaughter. And do not fight with them at the sacred mosque until they fight with you in it. But if they do fight you, then slay them. Such is the recompense of the unbelievers. <clears throat> you hear that? Islam is not a religion of peace. No, it's not. Uh, we'll continue reading what the Quran says about being peaceful. In Surah 4, 89, what does it say? Surah 4, verse 89, says the following. Hold on one second. Surah 4, 89. It's kind of funny that Someone was, who knows what's happening with, with my, it's like my, my app doesn't want to work all of a sudden. Let's, let's try this again. Sora 4. 
89. Well, this app is completely ruined all of a sudden. But let me just quote you. Let me just say it's Sora 489, Sora 839, and Sora 95. All of these Soras are not peaceful Soras. They're not. Because Islam is not a religion of peace. Let me repeat that. Praise the Lord. We go to, I found it. Now we are in Sora 489. I was able to fix it. It was just weird that I'm speaking about this, and now in my 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 iPad was having problems. I was like, is it, is it means that I'm being um, hawked or? Are spied and they messing up my system because I'm talking against Islam? Maybe, I don't know. The government. <laughs> I'm being hacked. The government doing it because they don't want me to speak against Islam. I, I, for a second, that came in my mind. Seriously. Um, Sora 489 says this. They desire that you should disbelieve as they have disbelieved so that you might be all alike. Therefore, Take not from among them friends until they fly their homes in Allah's way. But if they turn back, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them. And take not from among them a friend or a helper. Again, Islam is not a religion of peace. There's no peace in Islam. Now we go to Surah 839. 839. Surah 839. And what does it say? And fight with them until there is no more persecution. And religion should be only for Allah. But if they detest then surely Allah sees what they do. Again, it's telling them to fight. Surah 9 verse 5 says this. <coughs> he it is who made the sun a shiny brightness and the moon a light and ordained for the ma for it mansions that you might know the compunctions of years. Well, did I read the... I guess I... I, sh I think it wasn't them. It was in Swords 9-5. Um... Yep, it wasn't Sora's 9-5. I got Sora's 9-5 wrong, but the other verses I got right where it definitely shows that um, the Quran is not, doesn't speak about peace. Islam is not a religion of peace. Doesn't matter if George Bush said it. Doesn't matter whoever says it. Obama, specifically Obama. Um, Islam is not a religion of peace. Um... You can read those and look it up in the internet. Surah 2, 191. Surah 4, 89. Surah 8, 39. All shows that Islam is not a religion of peace. So, as I'm saying in this program, don't believe your college professors when they say Islam is a religion of peace. Don't believe the politicians when they tell you Islam is a religion of peace, because it's not. Are there peaceful Muslims? Yes, there are. <laughs> but what makes them peaceful? Because they don't agree, or they choose not to believe those passages. 
of the Quran. And if they do read them, they read it differently. But also, Islam acts is in different stages. There's the peaceful stage when they're at numbered. And then there's the stage where they're willing to make agreements with you because they're a religion of peace. You have your religion, I have my religion. But then when they become more powerful, it's it's attack. And they are no longer a religion of peace. Lord, help this nation. Lord, help us all. And let's try a witness to them. Teach them the Bible. Talk to them about the Bible. Talk to them about Jesus. Witness to Muslims. I want Muslims for Christ. And you may be able to win them too. Many of them. Um, when you read the Quran, it is a very bleak book. It, it condemns you more than it saves you. Matter of fact, there's a promise in the Quran that you will all go to hell. <laughs> Everyone goes to hell in the Quran. It says that in Surah 19, I believe is um, passage is 69 to 72. That tells all Muslims they're going to hell. And you could talk to them. The Bible promises you heaven if you believe in Jesus. If you place your faith in the real Jesus and not the Jesus of the Quran. Anyway, we're going to leave the program here. Lord bless you all, and I'll see you in the next program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. So long.